welterweight division matchup. So an interesting stylistic clash here. Prevailing wisdom is he's going to try to take his opponent down and get off some of that patented ground and pound. Yes, and once he's on top, he starts to just gain control first. He does not try to rush to the next position because he understands whether or not he's in the guard, half guard, or side control, he can find ways to land big damage. In the side control, he does a really good job of going knee on belly, posturing his body all the way to the top, and just coming down with big punches, Boom, once he lands, he goes back and he secures. Right. Then he goes back to find another, another big strike. He does not waste energy just throwing little rabbit punches. Everything has to matter, as you've seen in some of the great ground and pound fighters you've right. ever seen, like Jack Hermanson, guy that beats you into the bottom of the octagon until you roll over and give up your neck to get submitted. Yeah, nothing pitter-patter about it. No. So here's the Rio de Janeiro born Southpaw, the former UFC lightweight champion, Rafael Dos Anjos. What an evolution it has been for RDA since he debuted in the UFC in 2008. Seven years later in 2015, he was belted with the UFC lightweight title. Now moving up to welterweight, we'll see how it goes for Rafael Dos Anjos. for this highly anticipated welterweight fight. So two years, the gap in age, with some differences in height and a similar reach. The veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 21 wins, three losses. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Chicago, Illinois. Below, remember the name, Muhammad. And now, this is his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a grappler, holding a professional record of 31 wins, 14 losses. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Rafael Dos Anjos! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Levine. The veteran Eve Levine draws the assignment here. You ready? Face is very strong. This time he changed it up too. You know, for a long time he trained uh, at King's MMA with Rafael Cardero, but he went out and trained with a guy that's really gaining some steam, Jason Perillo. And uh, he feels comfortable with this change. And, and sometimes you get a little complacent and you need to make a change for your career. And RDA is looking phenomenal right now. Man, striking class is in session. Beautiful punch there. Great job landing. What a damaging punch. Big punch from the clinch. Oh, and now an elbow up top by RDA. Man, is he timing his shots well here tonight, DC. It's hard to recall him being this accurate. Beautiful takedown land. Squirming like a fish out of water now. The ground and pound is on point. This could very well be the beginning of the end. This could be the beginning of the end. We've seen some really good ground and pound fighters. This young man is as good as any we've ever seen. Oh, he's not going to get deep. off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. All right, working inside the closed guard now. This is no safe place against this opponent. Oh, he 
He's got the ground and pound going now. All right, got to be careful playing around inside his guard. Absolutely, John. That's why you don't sit in a full guard. When you sit in a full guard, it gives these guys too many opportunities to chase submissions. And now he's jumping on a triangle. A top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Dos Anjos has got the full mount. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. He has a commitment to kick it tonight, and it shows. He can't even, he can barely stand. So, under 30 seconds to go in what has been a pretty entertaining and active first round. Nice punch, man. And he landed the right hand there. The horn sounds for the end of round one. Take a look back at some of the highlights from that last round, DC. A lot for the replay guys to choose from. I mean, these guys are going to be very busy trying to find what replay to show you guys. Lands on both sides of the octagon. Both guys fought great. What a phenomenal round. You ready? You ready? All right, here we go with round two. That was a nice strike. Big leg kick land. Shot to the body, turned back by RDA. And that one certainly found the target. Well, he's been pretty accurate tonight. He's landed some significant strikes, but his corner's looking for him to mix it up a little bit more and just throw more volume. Because they don't see too much of a threat. This guy has to have confidence in knowing that when he extends his confidence... Double leg takedown attempt here, and that one is true. Nice job there to enter and ultimately plant his opponent on the mat. Now what does he do? That he's got his best shot off, finish the attack. Where does he go now from the top position? Well, pretty good work off of the bottom here by RDA. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent, you gotta be careful playing. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. And he's out. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now the ground and pound starts. A lot of top pressure being applied here. Lands with the ground and pound here. Well, hard to win fights in mixed martial arts from the bottom, but nice work here in that position by Dos Anjos. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Well, you know I don't like the key very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in the gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> Both fighters back to their feet now. Well, he's really picked up the pace here in round two. Much more aggressive now here and starting to find himself in the pocket. Just missed with the left there. He's throwing every part of himself into these big leg kicks. Nice punch there. Just misses there with the left. Look at how he turns his hip over when he throws that kick. So Sanjos attacks the body there. Well, what a round it was, especially from a striking standpoint. DC, take us through. High-level striking. I mean, this is what people come through the doors to see. 
Two men stand on a quarter, chest to chest, forehead to forehead, and let it all fly. I'm surprised nobody went out, but it does excite me for the next round. All right, DC, here we go with our next round, and we'll see if he can pick up where he left off. High volume of strikes landed in the previous round. High volume of strikes landed. He was able to be accurate, but also very, very active in his approach to the start of this fight. Well, he continues to land a high number of strikes here, just like he did in the previous round. This is a world-class display of striking here tonight. Look at the whip action that comes from him throwing that kick. Nice. He continues to mix it up, going to the head, mixing in some body shots. Now connects with the right. Oh, single collar tie here. All right, so a nice combination sets up the takedown there. He is not a one-trick pony mixing up the martial arts beautifully tonight. He have started as a wrestler, but you see now the finished product as he's able to throw those beautiful punches to set up the takedown. All right, we'll see how he chooses to defend here. Lands with the ground and pound. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Oh, and he's able to land a strike there from the bottom. Nicely done by Joe Sanchos. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Going for the arm here. Now he's okay. Now he can escape. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. Oh, nice. Nice. Nice strike. Oh, and he gets tagged. Beautiful combination there. And I'm not sure how many more of those power shots he can take, honestly. The night is almost over. If you keep getting hit with punches like this, you are going to sleep. Well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Close guard. Oh, nice job working hard, posting, and getting back up. Really good body kick. Well, don't leave it in the judges' hands. A little bit easier said than done. Competitive, close fight. You got to lean either way. I mean, it is horrible when you walk back to the center of the octagon not knowing exactly who won the fight. I thought he won a lot of the striking exchanges, but it wasn't very clear. So it'll be interesting to see who gets the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' for cards for a decision. For the winner, by split decision, Rafael Dos Anjos! All right, well, congratulations to him there, and I think five years from now, they'll forget that it was a split and not a unanimous decision, but that was a close fight. I mean, that was a very close fight, and that's the most uncomfortable decision in the world, to walk to the center not knowing if you did enough to get the job done. Fortunately, he did enough, and he got the victory. So I'm rolling.